The CABG, Coronary Artery Bypass Grafting or commonly known as Bypass Surgery, it's a modality of treatment to treat blocked coronary arteries of the heart. Everyone has three coronary arteries. Any of these coronary arteries are prone to get narrowings or blockages leading to heart attack. So patients with blocked, severely blocked coronary arteries get a bypass operation. What a bypass means are new conduits or new channels are built to bring blood flow beyond the area of blockage. For example, if there is a blockage at this point, we would now build a new con new conduit bypassing uh, like a flyover it hence the name bypass surgery it has evolved in the way that the materials or the conduits that are used for bypass initially only using veins from the lake now we have other materials or conduits which are in the body that can be used the second way it has evolved is it has moved from a very big procedure to something less invasive which can be done through smaller incisions for example previously limited to only the big incision over the front of the chest now it can be done to a smaller incision to the side of the chest wall Similarly, leg veins, when we take it for bypass conduit, it used to be big incisions over the whole leg. Now it can be, the veins can be harvested through small incisions using a camera and a scope, endoscopic vein harvesting. Additionally, previously all bypass were performed with the heart arrested. That means uh, the patient is put on a heart lung machine, cardiopulmonary bypass, the so called on palm coronary bypass. Now, there are certain indications where we can do the operation with the heart beating, not arresting the heart. The technique being called is off palm coronary bypass. The patient usually spends one or two nights in the intensive care unit. He spends about one week in hospital, then gets discharged. He's given leave from his work and normal activity for about one month and thereafter he can go back to his normal occupation. However, active physical sporting activity takes about three months before it can be resumed. Bypass surgery has come a long way over the last 50 years or so. Where previously it was a very high risk procedure, Right now, it's a low-risk routine procedure. The total risk involved in a bypass procedure, it's about generally 1% risk of not surviving the operation, and so 1% mortality, and an additional 1% of major complications. So what are the major complications? There is a small remote possibility of having a stroke, about 1%. There is a 1% risk of getting kidney failures, which are common especially in patients with diabetes. There is a 1% chance of getting wound infection from the, either from the chest wall or from the lake where the veins were harvested. Those are the major complications associated with the bypass operation. Patients usually get to see the doctor in the outpatient clinic where it's brief on the procedure. So preparation begins after consultation with the doctor. Several medications are told to be continued. Almost all medications are continued, except some blood thinning medications which the patient take when they have coronary artery narrowings. For example, aspirin or a cardiprin or something called clopidogrel. However, in preparation for surgery, they are told to stop the medication for about a week before surgery to prevent excessive bleeding during the operation itself. Another way that they can prepare themselves is many of the patients who have coronary artery blockages are active smokers. So they are, they are told to refrain from smoking uh, for the period while waiting before surgery. And during that period too, those who required are put through a uh, respiratory uh, physiotherapy re uh, program which will continue after surgery in a rehabilitation program as well to ensure that they have a good breathing effort after the operation. For blocked coronary arteries, there are three methods of treatment. 
Patients who have mild narrowings usually get medications. There are a range of medications. The aim of the medications is to relieve the symptoms and to prevent further blockages. However, no known medication that can dissolve any blockage. So a blockage that's remained will not be treated by any medications. So modality number two is having a either a balloon angioplasty or a stent placement in the area of blockage. Collectively, this is now known as percutaneous coronary intervention, PCI. In this method, a balloon is put into the area of uh, narrowing, blown up, the narrowing relief, and the area of narrowing is now uh, held in place with a scaffold or a metallic stent. Uh, this method is suitable for patients who have discrete lesions, meaning not many areas of blockages involving not many coronary arteries. There are three coronary major coronary arteries in the heart. When one has three major blockages, usually the patient would advise a bypass surgery. Following a successful bypass procedure, a patient needs to have follow-up treatment. The aim of follow-up treatment is several to ensure that his wounds have healed properly and also to make sure that he doesn't get the disease again, a recurrence of this disease. So that strategy is called secondary prevention. When we looked at secondary prevention, we look at risk factor modification, lifestyle modification. What it means is his diabetes, his high blood pressure, his cholesterol, his smoking habits, lifestyle habits are taken into consideration and modified so that will reduce the risk of him getting recurrent coronary artery disease. The question of whether somebody needs a second operation, for example, if a new bypass is performed, this bypass could be blocked or the area downstream to the bypass could be blocked too. In one, in any of these instances, yes, the patient may need a second operation many years down the road. However, once it is quite common to perform repeat bypass operation, which is called a redo coronary bypass surgery, now it's less common because of the success of medications in secondary prevention and the success of uh, angioplasty and stents in treating some of these narrowings and blockages. That being said, we still do perform uh, the occasional redo coronary artery bypass uh, in our hospital, in our practice. There are even instances where patients has a repeat third operation or a third bypass operation after two previous bypass surgeries. And this has been done successfully.